Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about the context API. So in the introduction video of this part of the course, we talked a little bit about global versus local state. And in this video, I will just do a small recap of that. Um, after that, we are actually going to work with the context API, see how we can use it in order to get and set data in our application. And last but not least, we will do a comparison between props, component composition, and context. And as you can see, I already gave away uh, a little spoiler, and that is that um, there are just very limited use cases for global state, um, you know, when we're talking about props, component composition, and, and context, where context then is considered to be a uh, global state. Uh, but before we get into that, small recap of global versus local state. So in a couple of videos back, we worked with props and what we essentially did, we defined some state in let's say component A and then passed it all the way down to, for example, component C um, by simply passing down props from component to component. Now the context API kind of like functions like a global state. So as you can see right here, um, you will essentially wrap a component in a context provider and that context provider holds the state and then all the child components of component B, for example, component C can then also access that state because component B was wrapped in that context provider. And this goes like different levels deep, right? So it's not just component C that can access the state, but let's say component C has a child component D and component D have two other child components. Also component D and those two child components can also access that state. So let's actually create um, a context provider. So on my right, I have the code we created in the video about props. And if you uh, don't have that code anymore, you can find it down in the description and to get started i will actually remove all the props we pass so right here for that input component i will remove the props and i will do the same for here i'll just comment this out because as you can see right now input value or sorry set input value is not defined anymore and right here we're going to dig all the way down and remove the props. All right, almost there. Uh, let's see, okay, I can comment this one out as well. Perfect, so now we got like, we removed all the props from, from the components. Um, so to get started with context, um, I will create a new folder in source. I will simply call it context. And I will call this input value context. And it can simply be a JavaScript file. Now, what we're actually going to do is the input value and the set input value that you state we are going to remove it from here and we are going to sort of create our own um, like use state in the input value context, but it, it is definitely not use state, um, but it, well, we can use it like that, so to speak. So to get started, um, I will actually use a code snippet and I highly recommend you um, to also make use of code snippets and Visual Studio Code whenever you have to like pretty much copy and paste a piece of code you often use. And for me, uh, it will be context API. Um, so I will also link down to this code in the description. And what I can recommend you to do then is to go, for example, to uh, like snippet generator. Um, let's see, I think it's this one, snippet generator app. Yep. And then you can simply copy and paste your, your code snippet in here. You can give it a name. I called it context API like this. 
and then you can simply copy that snippet and you can go over to file preferences user snippets and then you can select in my case it's javascript because i am currently using this in a javascript file and then you can add that snippet as you see i already added uh, the snippet but this is essentially like a very big object uh, that can contain multiple snippets um, and of course you don't have to but uh, i can definitely recommend you to do so um, so this code snippet is like perfectly uh, suited for our use case you know as you see it already has the input value properties and such um, but of course if you're going to make a, another context provider for something completely different you need to change the names and so on um, so let's get started with well taking a look at what's going on here so first we initialize our initial state and we set the input value to zero then we create a new function reducer that takes in state and action as an argument and then it will destructure the type and the payload of action then down below here we will have a switch statement and it will switch based on the type of our action based on this piece of uh, this string but you can have of course different cases in your switch statement and it will then return the state by making a shallow clone of it and then changing the input value to the payload it was given then here we create context with the initial state and then we create a new function called input value provider which um, right here uses the use reducer hook um, this is just something that is uh, provided by react as you can see it's imported from react and it will return a provider with both the state and the dispatch as a value and it will then render the um, props.children and what we're essentially doing here is exporting that context and the input value provider as you can see in, on this line and what we can do now we can um, essentially use this as our state management tool so I will save the file and let's implement this right here so we created our context provider with the state right the state is in here now what I will do, I will wrap both the input and calculation overview component in a input value provider. And we can use the one we exported right here. So I can say input value provider. You can see it will import it for me. And now when I save it, we wrapped both the input and calculation overview component in that provider. And now that means that, well, input is only one component without shouts, but calculation overview, of course, has like the multiplied calculations and then the multiplied by two component. And what it essentially means is that all those components can now use the state we created in that input value provider. So to get started, um, let's go to our um, multiplied by two component, this one. And now in order to use this state, I can say const state because I want to destructure the state of, um, and we're going to use uh, another hook right here, which is the use context hook from React. And we will pass the input value context as an argument. So input value context, there we go. And now see when I, console locked state and I head back to our app you will see we get an object with the input value of zero just as we uh, defined it as our initial state right here so now I can actually uncomment this code and say state dot input value and now you will see our multiplied number is zero, our initial state. 
Now we can do the same for the input component that should actually change um, this number right here. So right here, I want to grab the dispatch from use context. And also here we will take in the input value context um, as an argument. And when I log context or sorry, dispatch, you will see we will console log a function. And that's exactly what we passed right here to the provider. So that's our dispatch function. And that's where we can now um, change that input value. So in order to do that, I will uncomment this code. And now we can remove this because we do not make use of that use state hook anymore. And now we can say dispatch. And I want to dispatch an object with both a type and a payload as a property. Um, as you can see right here in the reducer, we are destructuring both the type and payload of the action. So we are going to essentially create an action right here. And I will say type is set input value because that is what we are wanting to do with this input field. And we will give it a payload of our e.target.value. So now when I save it, we have our input field. And as soon as I start typing some random numbers, our multiplied number will be updated. Now, let's say we want to have um, our calculation overview to have a button that always sets the multiplied number to 100. I could get over here, add a button and say, a set multiplied number to 100. And that takes an on-click event. And also here we wanting we want to then dispatch an action to our uh, context. So I can say again, const dispatch is use context, and we take in the input value context, and now we want to dispatch an action. So again, oops, again that will be an object with a type, but we do not um, have a type yet that is doing this, right? We only have, um, let's see, uh, where's our context right here? Of course, we could give it a payload of 100, which is possible, but just as an example, you can add another switch, or sorry, another case, and just put that right there, and I can say set input value, uh, to 100 and now the input value will then be set to 100 so we do not need to pass the payload in this case and now i can copy this go back right here give it as a type the set input value to 100 and now when i save it we have our button as soon as I start typing, we get the multiplied number that is changing. But when I click the button, our state will be set to 100. But of course, our multiplied component will increase it or multiply it by two. So that's why it shows us 200. Um, so that's an example of the context API. And I can tell you straight away that for this specific example, you should not use the context API but uh, I wanted to use this example to have like a good idea of props versus component composition versus context. So the main takeaway of, you know, the, the, the past videos and this one is this. Um, by default, use props, just simple properties, which is like the, like you could say, the default um, way of handling state in React. Once prop drilling, becomes a problem, use component composition. 
And in the video about component composition, we have also been talking about some of the uh, problems you can get, can get into when using component composition. And if that's the case, then you can use context as a last resort, you could say. And there are some common use cases for context, but they are very limited. You know, most of the time people are using context for setting, for example, some auth state, right? So whether a user is authenticated or not, often this is something you will use a lot in your application and you will like conditionally render uh, things based on that auth state. Um, also locale, which is essentially the language setting of your website is a great use case for using context. The UI team switching from like a light to dark team. Um, some people like to use it for, uh, for you know, when they want to hook up uh, some, some analytics tool with their application. So for in those cases, it's perfectly fine to use a context provider um, to handle that state. However, context also can um, introduce some problems. And one of it is performance and what will actually be happening if you're not using it properly, if you will get a lot of re-renders in your application that will like greatly slow down your application. And even though there are, you know, good practices in order to keep those re-renders to a minimum, and you can even fix them by uh, making use of memoization, which we will be talking about in the uh, performance series of this course. But down the line, you know, why not use props or component composition and just prevent all these problems, right? Um, the reuse of components can also be harder if you are storing a lot of state in context. And, you know, just take a look at all the code we had to write for this you know, pretty basic example. Uh, to some degree, it adds complexity to your application. And maybe right now you know about, okay, how, how to use context. Um, there might be React developers out there that don't know how to use it or, you know, don't know how to use it properly. And of course you can say, well, they probably should know. And I would definitely agree with that. But I think it's, you know, it's a good thing to try to keep your app as simple as possible. And using context definitely introduces another layer of abstraction, another layer of complexity. And again, if you can prevent that, try to do so. So that was it for the context API. Thanks for watching. And I'd like to see you in the next one.